In this guide, we're going to talk about delegation and how to use decorators in Ruby. Now, if you have never heard of this, then you're, I think, going to be in for a treat because this is going to be a topic that's very important one for coding interviews. It is also incredibly important in modern development times because a number of the frameworks such as Angular 2 and some of the other JavaScript frameworks really leverage using decorators, and I'm going to talk about the difference between using a delegator versus a decorator, and they use that to be able to have more clean coding practices. And so let's, I'm going to first start off before we get too much into the theory, I'm going to create a basic class, and this is going to be a class called invoice. It's going to take a adder accessor method called, and the attribute's gonna be called name. And then I'm going to have an initialized method that takes in a name, and it sets the name equal to name so that we can use the name variable throughout the rest of the class or any inherited classes. And then it also takes a invoice date. So I'm gonna say invoice date, and then I'm going to say date dot new, and we'll say 1989 9 10 for the date. And also because I'm doing that, I need to require the date library up top. So now with this in place, we have a invoice. But what if we want to add more custom functionality to the invoice and like say that we wanted to create a helper method that could check to see what month that the invoice was created in. We could create a new method here and it could be called invoice month and then it could take the invoice date and because it's a date object we could just say month and that would work. However, this class is starting to get a little bit messy and whenever you see that you are using methods such as invoice month, this is more of a helper method and doesn't really belong in the class. If you continue to build your class out like this, you'd end up with a invoice class with dozens of methods and whenever you'd have to go back and work on it, it would be very confusing on what class method or what methods were actually important and core to the class and which ones were simply helper methods. And this is where working with decorators and delegation comes in very handy because say that we want to create those type of helper methods, we could create a module and that could technically work, but a module usually doesn't know a lot about the class. It's usually very loosely coupled to the class, which means it doesn't have to care about what an invoice does. But for a helper type method that I have in mind, such as being able to have an invoice month, then this really needs to know and have a direct interface with the invoice class. And that's where a decorator can come in really handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new class here. I'm not going to make it a subclass of invoice. And the reason why is because the, the standard object-oriented programming procedure for subclassing is if you use a subclass or use inheritance, what that means is the inherited class should be a type of that class. So if I used inheritance, then, and right here, and I said, you know, class XYZ is a subclass of invoice, that should mean that it is a type of an invoice. But we're not really trying to create a type here. We're trying to create just some additional methods that we can add to the class without cluttering it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a decorator. So I'm gonna say invoice decorator, and I'm gonna say this doesn't inherit from invoice, Instead, this inherits from the simple, simple delegator class. And this is a class that is core to Ruby. And what it will allow us to do is to be able to take in 
invoice as an argument. So whenever we create a new invoice, we can simply pass that in as an argument to our invoice decorator and it will allow us to work with that object and add different items around it. The reason why it's called a decorator is if you imagine in a real life scenario, if you have a uh, you know, if you have a system or if you have something that you want to add design to, so say that you have a fireplace mantle and you want to decorate that, you are going to take different objects and different things and be able to put them on top of the mantle. You're not actually changing the mantle, you're simply decorating it. You're adding things on top of it. And that's the way decorators work in programming. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create that invoice month method that we talked about. So this is going to be invoice month. It's going to be able to take the invoice date and then call month on it. So notice here that even though this is a method that is specifically created and inside of invoice, because this is a decorator, we're able to call this method. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to instantiate an invoice and then pass it into the decorator, which we'll walk through later. But for right now, just know that we have access to these methods. The next thing I'm gonna do is I want to be able to work with the data. So we talked about working with the methods. Let's see how we can work with data. So I can say def and last name. And what I can do here is if you notice on line five, we have a, an attribute for name. So I can actually take that name, I can split it. So if we pass in a first and a last name, then I can grab the last item there, which is gonna be the last name. So this can work not just with methods, it can also work with each one of the attributes too, which is very helpful. I'm gonna take and copy this. Actually, I'm gonna take both of these. And this is what we're gonna work with as an example. Okay, so here I have an invoice I've instantiated. It's invoice new, and if you look up in line seven, you know we only have to pass a name in, so I'm passing in Christine Hudgens, my daughter's name, and now we are going to create a decorated invoice. So here I have a decorated invoice, it's just a local variable, and I'm creating a new decorator. So I say invoice decorator dot new, and the argument for the decorator is the object that we wanna work with. So in this case, we're creating the invoice and then we're passing it to the decorator. And now that we have that, we can do anything that we want to it. So I can do decorated invoice dot invoice month. And now this should give us nine because that is the month for the invoice date. And if everything works, then that should work. And yes, that worked perfectly. Okay, so now let's come down to line 29 and let's call that last name item. So I'm gonna say decorated invoice dot last name and this should give us Hudgens. Running this code, you can see that that works very nicely. So this is a pretty cool thing. Notice how we added all kinds of additional functionality such as grabbing the last name of a individual and being able to create a customized helper method for the date and we can do all of that and we've not added a single piece of code into the actual class. This is considered a very good practice when done properly and right here you can see that we have a lot more functionality and we didn't have to clutter up our class at all. Now one other thing that can be incredibly helpful is knowing which object you're working with because in a real life application when you're doing this many times you're going to be creating a number of different classes or a number of instances of a class passing them into a decorator and if you end up with some weird behavior it's helpful to know which object you're working with so let's say that right here i create two invoices one is going to be the one for christine hudgens and the other one's going to be for my wife tiffany hudgens 
Now, each one of these items are still going to work exactly the same because we're passing in just the regular first invoice. But now, what happens if we want to know the object that got passed in for each one of these? So I'm going to create one more decorated invoice. And this one's going to take in invoice two. And with all of this in place, now I can call a very helpful method, and this is called the getObject method. Now it looks kind of weird, and so that's why I wanted to specifically point it out. So I'm going to call the decorated invoice, and then dot, and then two underscores, get object two underscores, and then I'm going to copy this. And so now, if I run this code, you'll see that we have the ability to grab and to find out which objects we're actually working with. So this may not seem like a big deal, but I can tell you from experience, when you're working with a number of instantiated classes, then it can start to get a little bit messy when you're performing debugging. And you need to see, okay, what exact class are we working with or what instance of that class are we working with because if you're getting data that doesn't really line up you need to be able to perform a trace and to be able to find at what stage are you working with one instance of the class versus the other so in other words if I was getting some weird values for last name or an heir or something I would want to be able to see okay was that happening on the one for Christine Hudgens or was it on the one for Tiffany Hudgens and so that's something that is you useful many times when you're debugging and how your how your decorators are working. So all of this is working. Let's verify that it's passing the test. So I'm going to say March and this one is I believe March 10th. Let's see. We have I believe we have three examples and Let's see, yes we do. So this is all of our tests are passing, which is good. But before I end this, I want to talk a little bit about a term that may be a little bit confusing, which is we talked about decorators, but we also talked about delegators. And if you come down to line 16, you can see that our decorator inherits from simple delegator. Well, if that seems kind of confusing, don't worry. There are This is something that confuses many developers, many times even experienced developers. And so what the difference is, is a delegator is, a, is kind of a little bit more abstract. So a delegator is essentially a process where you're saying, I want to delegate a class to perform these kinds of helper method type tasks. A decorator is more of the implementation of that, and delegation is a way that, a delegation actually, there are a number of ways that you can implement it. The decorator pattern is one of the most common ones in computer science that you can use, but when it comes to delegation, there are a number of other ways you can also perform this. If you're familiar with the forwardable module in Ruby, that's another way of performing delegation. In this case, we're using a decorator. When it comes to applications I personally build, I typically like to use the simple delegator and then create a decorator pattern just because, for one, it's easier for me to memorize. The, uh, sometimes the affordable module can, uh, I usually have to look that up, whereas I've created these delegators so many times that the syntax is a little bit more straightforward. So I like it. I also like how easy it is to access the methods, the attributes, and all the data data inside of the classes that I'm decorating. So this is one that uh, it's a pattern that I personally like quite a bit. And so it's what I use. So just to remember, the difference is a decorator is a, is a way to implement delegation. And that's really what the difference between the two is.
So nice job if you went through all that. I know, once again, these last couple episodes have been a little bit longer, but they've been covering some pretty important topics. And this one in particular is a very important topic in the realm of computer science. And there's a lot of research going around decorators and the proper way to use them. And so if you have a good understanding of it, then great job. If it's still fuzzy, I definitely recommend one that you follow along, actually implement this code, because that by itself is gonna help you understand the way it works more. And then if not, go through the video a few times until it starts to solidify in your mind.